Hello. Currently watching the wild card game series against the Rays and Guardians. It is a pitching duel, this series. I love it. 0-0, uh, zero, zero, top of the third. Dang, top of the third. It's been like over half an hour, so they're not doing terrible on time. Anyways, going to be recapping the Rangers 2020, or 2022 season and also saying what I want the Rangers to do in the offseason. First, I'll start the recap. I'll start with the starting pitching staff because that's always the hardest to get through with the Rangers historically. Martin Barrage, one of the two All-Stars this season. Resign him. He did amazing. Finished with a 2.89 ERA in 190 innings. Going to be a top 10 Cy Young vote getter. Another veteran free agent pitcher signed by the Rangers who was turned into a top 10 Cy Young contender. So, re-sign him because, honestly, a few, a couple, a year or two ago, would have been fine with trading him at the deadline. But, really, the Rangers are getting to this point in time where they really need starting pitching now because Cole Wynn is not developing 100%. Jack Leiter had just had his first season. Uh, he would tell you that he didn't have a good season. And Cole Reagans, he's on the major league roster now, but... Still has some time to develop. Like it's important that the Rangers get starting pitchers that can eat up innings and can have ERAs below four. So I don't want to just let Martin Perez go in free agency. I want to have him on the Rangers pitching staff, and also he could be a mentor to the younger pitchers. So I want to keep Martin Perez around. <clears throat> As for Dane Dunning, oh my God. I love Dane Dunning, dude. He is so consistent. I mean, not not often do you get a Rangers pitcher that can consistently pitch 150 innings or more and have an ERA of 4.5. That's amazing. I was so upset when he was when he, his season was shut down. I hope he recovers from his injury, of course. Aside from me wanting to watch him play, but it's unfortunate that his season was shut down because. Dane Dunning probably would have been pitching against Aaron Judge there if he wasn't shut down. But, oh well. Dane Dunning, I love him. Uh, every single start, you're going to get five innings or more, three earned runs, no more, no less. Awesome. Awesome pitcher. Glenn Slinger's auto. Did okay. Um, he... Had a great first start against the Athletics. Was flirting with the perfect game. And then, um... It was just on and off the rest of the season. Um, I think he had a great October. Even Of course, you could say that because he had a quality start. But uh, as for September, he improved upon his season. Um, I like one slinger auto. It's just, he just needs to... You know, develop more consistency. Because um, it's always... He gives up a couple home runs. Then he gives up three earned runs or more. Um, doesn't last more than five innings. That's when his starts are what he would c consider bad. So... Just develop more consistency. <laughs> consistency. Uh, consistency. John Gray did his jab. Eight up innings, had a lot of starts, unfortunately was shut down for the rest of the season, but good job, John Gray. I consider it a win when he can have an ERA below four outside of Colorado. Honestly, a huge win. W. Um, hopefully he is healthy next season and can have an ERA below four once again and have an over 150 innings pitched. Honestly... With how t p pitching in Texas has gone the past decade, I'm okay with any pitcher that can pitch over 150 innings and have an ERA below 4.5. Honestly. Um, but hey, ERA below 4? Oh, we're getting good here. Um, I went over Dane Dunning. I went over Glenn Otto. I went over John Gray. I went over Martin Perez. Uh, those are the starting pitchers that 
had enough innings to qualify for starting pitching. Um, if you go off baseball reference, like they're the only four starting pitchers on the team page. So with that, I'll move on to the bullpen. Another tough part to get through with the Rangers roster. Brock Burke, Matt Moore, they did their jab. Ground ball pitchers, they did their jab. Both, if it wasn't for Matt Moore getting the save on the final game, in the final game of the season, Brock Burke and Matt Moore would have had ERAs of 1.97. But, you know, Matt Moore, he just had to get the three-out save and have an ERA of 1.95. Typical Matt Moore stuff. But they both had, like, copy and paste years. They both had ground ball outs. They both had sub-two ERAs. They both pitched more than 60 games. I think with Brock Burke, I think he pitched 57 games, but both 60 games or more. That's great. Keep him around. Resign Matt Moore. Also resign Martin Perez, if I didn't already mention that. Um, Taylor Hearn. He was a starting pitcher to start the season, but then it was rough for him. I think he could only do four innings in the home opener. But, uh, you know, it's the past couple seasons, it's been a conundrum or a dynamic thing with Taylor Hearn where he's a starting pitcher, but then he's out of the bullpen. And now he's transferred to the bullpen late in the season. And me personally, I think he could he should stay as a middle relief pitcher. He's done really well in that game against the Yankees, um, that Tuesday night game. Taylor Hearn did great out of the bullpen. I got to see him pitch. He had four or five strikeouts. He did great. Um, but, yeah, I think it should stay in middle relief. My God, it's just fly ball city in this game. Lots of fly ball outs. Um, Dennis Santana, unfortunate season for him because he did great the first few months. And then July happened where he gave up that grand slam against the Athletics. And then... He just didn't, he couldn't recover. He couldn't. But hey, pitched a lot of games. Early in, early in the season, he was the pitcher that got out of jams. But then, the extra innings game against the Athletics happened, and he couldn't quite regain that consistency. Uh, but hey, anytime you have a relief pitcher on the Rangers that can pitch over 60 games, that's helping out, that's helping the bullpen out. Joe Barlow. On paper, he had a good season, but he would tell you that it was also a consistent form. He was the closer, but then was taken out of the closing role. Um, loved giving up home runs. I'll just say that cynically. Um, then he had an IL stint in July. I want to say it was late July when that happened. But um, I'm hoping the best for Joe Barlow, of course. I hope he can regain consistency out of the bullpen. Um and, geez, we're not even talking about DeMarcus Sevens. I'm hoping the best for him, too. I want him back on the bullpen so that Joe Barlow and DeMarcus Sevens can have that dynamic duo that they had in Frisco. What else? Any other bullpen arms to mention? Jose Leclerc. I loved watching him pitch this season. It's always nice to have Jose Leclerc back. Um, not consistent, of course, but on paper, he had a great season. It's always been him having... Three walks per nine. Oh, well. I'm hoping the best for him, of course. Jonathan Hernandez, back from the IL. Did great. I want him part of this bullpen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Jesus Tinoco made some good impressions. Is he going to be on the roster next season? We'll see. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? I don't think so. Uh, honorable mention, Cole Reagans. He did his job. I mean, he didn't have an ERA over 10, so he did his job. Uh, hopefully he can develop because the Rangers desperately need some consistent starting pitching. Now, the infielders. Um, Jonah Heim did great. Should have been an all-star instead of Jose Trevino. But, hey, I mean, they had the same season, basically. And anytime you have a catcher above with an above 700 OPS, it's a pretty good offensive catcher. So, Jonah Heim... 
great catcher this year. As for Sam Huff, I'm not sure. I mean, it's, it's going to be a competition between Mitch Garver and Sam Huff as to how's, who's going to be the second string catcher. <laughs> second string. We're, we're in football terms now. Uh, but who's going to be that second catcher? Is it going to be Sam Huff or Mitch Garver? Or is Mitch Garver just going to completely move to DH? But Mitch Garver, no. As for Sam Huff, I mean, he just needs to gain more consistency. I'm sure he'll have more consistent playing time next year. But as for Mitch Garver, I liked watching him play. He did his job. Had an above 700 OPS, hit home runs, but then in June. I think it was early July, went on the injured list. Hmm. I hope he can uh, have health next season. Um, I want him in the DH role just because I'm not sure if he had his forearm injury while catching or not. I'm not sure, but I just want him to be a DH because honestly, the Rangers have just with the DH position, it's always just been up in the air. Uh, Mark Mathias made a great impression at the DH position, but me personally, as someone who just, I mean, I just want one person per position to have majority playing time. Mitch Garver's your guy right there. First base, Nathaniel Lowe. The emergence of Nathaniel Lowe. What a guy. Great offensive season. But as for defense, improve on your defense, dude. He can scoop, but scooping does not mean much at the first base position if you have a negative DRS. So, improve on that, please. Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager. I mean, they did their jobs. They had above four war seasons. So, I mean, they did their job. Not even worth mentioning. Just kidding. They both had great seasons. Uh, as for Corey Seager, he made the routine plays, but... When it came to screaming line drives or just booting some ground balls here and there, um, that's always been how Corey Seager plays at shortstop. But great offensive season from both the middle infielders. Third base. Oh, my God. Third base was the position that was also up in the air. At one point, you had Andy Banyas. I was an Andy Banyas truther, but then he stunk. And then it was Josh Smith and Ezekiel Duran fighting for playing time at third base. And they both sizzled three months after three months, basically. Um, but then Josh Jung happened. I got to see his first career home run. I want him in third base. Josh Jung has made a great defensive impression from my perspective. He has a great throwing motion. My my brother who went to Texas Tech, he was telling me he throws like this and he makes it look so easy. He throws it overhand. Usually you see infielders do the diagonal arm slot over to the sidearm, but overhand just like that? It's like a free throw. Hmm. Makes it look easy. But Jash Jang, just improve on the plate discipline. Just keep on hitting home runs, please. But yeah. Left field. That's the position that was not filled consistently this season. Uh, Eli White was, defensively at least, before he had that gruesome injury in Chicago when Carly, Charlie Culperson like, slid into him. But hey, it was, a, it was just a play. It was just a play. And then Josh Smith and Charlie Culperson were basically switching. Um, Joey Gallo could fill that hole in left field pretty well. Uh, but Bubba Thompson, he filled in as well. I liked Bubba Thompson, but left field's going to be that position that's going to be uh, it's going to be a competition in spring training for left field. Center field. Leody Tavera, so reliable in center field. He makes it look so easy. He hit a home run in the penultimate game. Great stuff that won the Rangers the game. First home run in a while. I got to see that from the first base dugout seats. But uh, I like Leody Tavares. I was saying a couple years ago, I want him to be that 
staple in center field. Adolis Garcia, oh my God. Continuing on his rookie year, but being more consistent. Um, 100 RBIs, one of three Rangers in history to do that. Um, but yeah, it was just great offense all around from the Rangers. Um, you know, it's improve, It's easy to improve on the dog shit offense from last year, but great season offensively. And again, leading the league in stolen bases. I want to say it was the first time since 2019 that's happened because last year the Royals led in stolen bases. But honestly, great season for offense. But the improvement areas are with getting more consistent starting pitchers, bolstering that bullpen, and filling in that left field spot. I think Joey Danger's Gallo could fill that hole in left field. But anyways, uh, I have spoken for a long time. That is the 2022 Rangers season. Last thing I'll mention, the managerial search. <sighs> My standards are low. Just have experience in the Rangers organization. Tony Beasley, you're the man. They did interview him, but... Please don't sign someone from outside the Rangers organization because they're going to have to adjust to the entire roster if that's the case. So just hire a manager that has experience in this organization. That is all. CY, I hope you're watching. Just do that, please. Um, but it is the bottom of the fourth now. Still 0-0. Very competitive game, the Guardians and Rays. Uh, but that is all.